calling us higher, I wanted to begin this morning with a calling that we have in Scripture. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 7. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. We've been called unto holiness. The Lord gives the call. He said, be ye holy. That's the call. And then he says, for I am holy. There's a reason behind that call. So what is this call? Call to holiness. I wanted to incorporate our brethren in my calling this morning, Naylor Morris, um, Leela, Leela Naylor Morris, who wrote Holiness Unto the Lord. I wanted to read some of these words. I enjoy this song very much. Called unto holiness, church of our God, purchase of Jesus, redeemed by his blood, called from the world and its idols to flee, called from the bondage of sin to be free. Called unto holiness, children of light, walking with Jesus in garments of white, raiment unsullied nor tarnished with sin, God's Holy Spirit abiding within. Called unto holiness, praise his dear name, this blessed secret to faith now made plain, not our own righteousness, but Christ within, living and reigning and saving from sin. Called unto holiness, glorious thought, up from its wilderness wanderings brought, out of the shadows of darkness and night, into the Canaan of perfect delight. <coughs> Called unto holiness, bride of the Lamb, waiting the bridegroom's returning again. Lift up your heads, for the day draweth near, when in his beauty the King shall appear. Amen. So this call unto holiness, I wanted to focus on one particular area of our, li our lives are to be holy, but one particular area is that of the mind. And these thoughts were spurred from Exodus when the Lord was giving instructions on the priestly garments and how they were to be made. I want to turn back to Exodus 28, verses 36 through uh, uh, some portions of 38. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it, like the engravings of a signet, holiness to the Lord. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace, that it may be upon the mitre, upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead, and it shall be always upon his forehead. So this parallel that I want to draw as we are kings and priests unto the Lord is the holiness of mind. That's where this plate was to be put. Holiness unto the Lord, holiness of mind. Now, first of all, we remember that the promise of the new covenant was that the Lord would put his laws in our mind and write them there. So we see here the activity of the mind in the new covenant. The people of God were also called to love the Lord their God with all of their mind was one of the things. There's a blessing for those whose mind is stayed on him. They'll be kept in perfect peace. And also remember that the wicked will not seek after God because they don't retain God in their knowledge. But those who love the Lord, his people, we do retain God in all of our thoughts. <clears throat> our mind is where the tempter sends his flaming arrows, those temptations. And so there's a lot of battle that rages in our minds. Amen. So when we have this holiness of mind, it serves as a protection for the warfare. Amen. When we seek to maintain a holy and undefiled mind, then these temptations will obviously be out of place. They'll be foreign. They'll be something that we can identify more quickly. So then the, the holy mind hates even vain thoughts, but it despises temptations that are contrary to holiness. Remember that plate of the high priest? It was to be engraven upon pure gold. So the holiness of mind that we've been given by the Lord, of course, this is the mind of Christ. He's given this to us. Um, this holiness of mind that we've been given is born in purity, purity before the Lord. We want to keep our minds pure with no mixtures, nothing else defiling, nothing else that can be um, a, a sharing the same mind with us, no compromise, no infiltration of evil, a pure mind of holiness unto the Lord. Because we know that if our enemy can corrupt our mind, then he can corrupt our whole being. Amen. But when we keep this holiness to the Lord in the forefront of our mind, the Lord uses that for a defense for us. Amen. Now, not only is this holiness of mind a protection for us, but it also fortifies our minds, helping us to keep the things that we love, 
helping us to throw down the things that we hate. It strengthens our mind so that we are able to deal more, uh, more soundly with the Lord and his kingdom. Thoughts of holiness, um, or through this holiness, we have strength to cast everything down that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and to bring into obedience every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when we find those thoughts that are not contrary to holiness, but are of the same nature, things that we love, then this holiness gives us strength to hold on to them and keep them so that we can continue to meditate upon them and be profited by them, that we can expand these things in our own thinking. <clears throat> holiness will expand the borders of our mind. It'll enrich our understanding, and it will add to our thoughts and meditations of the Lord. There is great substance of mind that comes from holiness therein. Now, holiness of mind is also an offering to the Lord. This was in the priestly garments. This was to be worn when they came in before the Lord. And what was graven on there was holiness to the Lord. So this holiness of mind that we have is actually an offering that we give back to him. The priest's mind and his whole being were the Lord's. So to keep this holiness of mind that the Lord has provided for us, it will take diligent effort. It is something that has to be rigorously maintained because the enemy continues to seek to infiltrate and to defile that. But this is like pre preparation of a sacrifice that we keep this holy that the Lord has given to us. We do not claim our minds for our own use, but rather we are preparing them to be offered to the Lord for his use. When we purge or shun the wicked and vain thoughts, then we think about those things that are pure and lovely and just and virtuous. Then the Lord will have a vessel of honor that is sanctified and that is meet for his use. He'll be able to take it and he'll be able to use it for what his intentions are and his will. Now, the Lord does require such an offering. He, he mandates this, but he's also due this offering. He is worthy of the holiness of mind of his people. And I was considering this, that the priests were called into the service of the Lord, but this, they sided with him initially. Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? And the tribe of Levi came. They gave themselves to the Lord and he took. Amen. So we have been also willingly, we love the Lord. We willingly give ourselves to him. And he gives us his holiness of mind, which is required for his service. So we're able to enter into the work with him. Amen. So I'm very thankful that the Lord has in, engaged us in this together. Amen. So with all of these things, we see that the, the area of our mind, we are a steward of our minds. It is very important because in, re in uh, stewards, it is required that a man be found faithful. So in this area, we want to be faithful. And there was another songwriter that penned my desire in, in considering these things. She said, more holiness give me. That's the desire of the soul that has this holiness of mind unto the Lord. We want more of this. We want to be more able to track with the Lord in our minds and to be able to take hold of the things that he gives us. So this morning, I would give us all that call, holiness unto the Lord, both in mind and in body. Amen. Amen. Sister Bailey. Has